Thanks, guys. Welcome to part two of Make a Game with me, Goose, and Julian. Thanks again for joining us, Julian. Thanks for having me, Goose. Now, in part one, we learned all about the game-making tool called Scratch. And today, we're going to start on the Good Game Spawn Point Invaders game. Now, Julian, what's the very first step? We'll need to import the graphics for our game. You can use images already in Scratch, import new ones, or even draw your own sprites. Scratch even has a graphics editor built in. OK, well, we're going to use our own, which we've kindly prepared for you on the Good Game Spawn Point website here. Download the graphics to your desktop and then open up Scratch. Upload the graphics via the Sprites panel in the bottom left. Now, graphical elements in Scratch are referred to as sprites, so don't get confused when we start using that term. That's right, Goose. Now load in the sprites for Darren, Bajo, Hex and Goose. Ah, they look great. I can't wait to bring them to life. Great work, Goose. Now let's add the humans to the game and their crab-like invader movement. Click on Bajo and from events, give him a green flag block. From motion, slot in a go to X, Y block and insert minus 207 for X and 153 for Y. This is his starting position. Go to looks and slot in a show block. This commands his sprite to appear. Now for movement. From control, drag across a forever loop. Into the forever loop, slot a repeat 10 loop. Change the value from 10 to 30. Now go to motion and slot a move 10 steps block into the middle of the repeat block. Go back to control and slot a wait one seconds block underneath the move block. Change the one to 0.3. That will make Bajo march across the screen. Exactly. Now below that, go to motion and slot in a change Y by 10 block below the repeat loop and change the value to minus 50. This makes Bajo move downward. Below that, add another repeat loop with move and weight blocks inside. Only this time, make each movement minus 10 steps. Slot in another change Y by minus 50 block and Bajo's movement pattern is complete. OK, let's test it. Ah, it works! Now, do we have to do the same for both Hex and me? Not exactly. We can drag the script we made for Bajo onto both the Hex sprite and the Goose sprite. Then select the Hex sprite and change the starting position to X minus 167 and Y 153. Then change the Goose sprite starting position to X minus 127, Y 153. That way, you're not all on top of each other. And done! And it works! What impressive invaders we make! Now for Darren's movement, this is different because the player gets to control him. Select the Darren sprite and from events, give him a green flag block. From motion, slot in a go to X, Y. Change that to X 206, Y minus 133. Then from control, slot in a forever loop and pop an if then loop inside it. From sensing, slot a key pressed block into the space between if and then. And from its drop down menu, choose left arrow. Go to motion and slot a move 10 steps block inside the if then loop. Change its value to minus 10. Below that, still within the forever loop, Add another if-then loop, only with the right arrow and 10. Below that, add a third if-then loop and select space. Instead of a move block, go to events and slot in a broadcast. Left click on the drop down menu and click create new message. In the text box, type fire and then click OK. Now, let me test that. Success! The invaders now invade, and Darren moves left and right when I tell him to. He doesn't fire any lasers, though. 
That's because we haven't programmed that in yet. We'll get to the lasers next time. Oh, I can't wait. But before we go, remember to save your project so we can continue working on it next time. Remember, you can catch up and rewatch all the parts to this series on our website here. Until then, happy programming. Goose out. Julian out. Thanks, Goose and Julian. OK, guys, I've almost got all the sprites loaded in. Hang on. Uh. Marjo, you can fix your code after the show. You have to go answer questions now. Oh, yes, yeah. What a noob. <laughs>